Welcome to this episode of Faith and Reason. We have Father Charles Murr and Liz Yor with us, and we are going to go through the eclipse. What happened there? Why did it go through in the USA all the towns uh, named Nineveh? What does that have to do with what's upcoming? Remember, Nineveh was the place where Jonah warned the people they had 40 days to repent. Otherwise, uh, they would face destruction. What does that mean? We're going to unpack that and much more. Elon Musk is in the news because he has defied Brazil, and there's all sorts of Brazilian politicians thanking him. Moreover, we have the latest from the Vatican and Trump's very disappointing statement on abortion. And does that also have to do with what America needs to repent for? All that and much more on this episode of Faith and Reason. Stay tuned. Father Mary Liz York, so good to be with you. Great to be with you. Always a, pleasure. Always a pleasure to be with the two of you. Father, if you wouldn't mind launching us off with a prayer, please. Certainly. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. Taught by our Savior's command, informed by God's holy word, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, amen. hallowed be thy name. Amen. Thy amen. kingdom come, amen. thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Father and the Son of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. So uh, an incredible time on April the 8th there. We had uh, the eclipse. It was four days of unbelievable uh, church time as we went from uh, the whole Easter celebrations to uh, Divine Mercy Sunday. We had, we had actually a, a, a first Friday, first Saturday of the month, uh, then Divine Mercy Sunday, the end of the Easter octave, and then the day of the eclipse, of course, was the Feast of the Annunciation moved. So it was an incredible powerhouse, uh, long weekend, you might say, uh, for the church. In addition, the eclipse comes and it goes through, as it enters into Texas, it goes through Jonah, Texas, the name of the prophet who was called to go to Nineveh to preach there. And he tried to run away. And uh, he was uh, swallowed by the whale, if you remember, uh, then spit out and did finally go and preach in Nineveh, telling them they had 40 days to repent. Otherwise, Nineveh would be destroyed. And then what happened? Um, he did that preaching and they did repent from the, you know, from the king on down, everybody was in sackcloth and ashes and they repented and God did not destroy uh, them. Are we going to repent in America? And for what do we need to repent? Oh, and by the way, one more mention. Uh, there's a lot of fact checkers that said, no, no, no. They didn't go through all the town. The eclipse didn't traverse through all the towns that were named Nineveh in the United States. Um, only through two. Well, here's the tracker that you can check it out for yourself. I loved fact checking the fact checkers because they're usually full of baloney. Look at this red line. The red line is the path where the track went through. You'll notice a pink line to either side. That's where it had a near totality. And all of the cities called Nineveh in the United States are right in that either first tier or second tier. So yes, indeed, it did traverse through all those. And then also one town in Canada named Nineveh. In fact, the only town that I know of in Canada named Nineveh. So indeed, there is a message here. And what is that message? What is 40 days, by the way, after April 8th? It's May 18th, the day before Pentecost. Are we going to be seeing something May 18th unless we repent? And Liz, what do we need to repent of? There's something totally fascinating. Listen up. Well, it's what's interesting about the solar eclipse, and I don't think it's any coincidence, those Christians, um, both Catholics, evangelicals, everybody seems to be talking about the path of the solar eclipse going across Nineveh. Um, but interestingly, the cross-section 
um, from 2016, the solar eclipse and the um, town that it crossed uh, this past week is called Carbondale, Illinois. I know Carbondale, it's a Southern town in Illinois. It's a campus town, the big Southern Illinois University um, is in Carbondale. Carbondale is a very conservative town, was a very conservative town, but as a result of the Dobbs decision, it has become a um, abortion destination place. Um, unfortunately, Planned Parenthood in Memphis decided to close up shop and move over to Carbondale. And as a result, Carbondale has become uh, Planned Parenthood's big destination. Um, we know that um, if there is any sin that must be um, addressed immediately in this country and around the world, it's the sin of abortion that has really brought our country to its knees. You know, I was reading as a result of the solar eclipse and Carbondale, um, a conversation between Mother Teresa and Hillary Clinton. And Hillary Clinton said very you know, haughtily to Mother Teresa, why do you think um, we don't have an American president who's a woman? We've had no American president who's been a woman in this country. And Mother Teresa said, it's probably because she was aborted. And of course, that's silent. <laughs> Fantastic <laughs> answer. That's Fantastic. Um, that silenced um, Hillary Clinton. And um, so, you know, and interestingly, as a result of the solar eclipse, now, of course, there's all sorts of news breaking about abortion. Um, and so, um, I, you know, just my own personal experience, judging from the confession lines of this past weekend, um, not only, you know, for Saturday, for uh, Friday, but also um, Divine Mercy Sunday. And of course, there was a lot of chatter about the solar eclipse and the impact it would have um, on, you know, on souls on the country. Um, it seemed to me a big wake up for people. Um, I heard about a lot of people who hadn't been to confession in decades going to confession this weekend. So whether it's a sign in the skies or um, in the calendar, I think it, it was a um, a good sign. Now we have 40 days and um, let's see how the country responds um, in the next 40 days. Really a calling back to um, repentance um, and to really return our country to a culture that reflects um, Christianity, Jesus Christ, and the culture of life. Now, Father, we had, um, you know, been paying attention to the solar eclipse and is this kind of like superstition or can Catholics actually look to the skies for signs from heaven? You can look. <laughs> look, the, announce, the, the announcement that Jesus Christ was born came from the heavens. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 you have three kings following a star that, that moved and stayed over the place where he was born as an indication of where he was. So yes, look, Anytime you want to say something can't be done without realizing it, you're limiting God, right? <laughs> Never do that. It's always a mistake. It's right. always a mistake. And God can use anything. Look, how many times has God used people to get a message to us? What we're trying to do with this program is to get to people, to, to wake people up, to get a message across. Uh, why can't he use objects? He does. He uses objects, he uses animals, he uses events, anything like that. You were talking, Liz, it just reminded me, uh, you were talking about the confession lines. I was in Manhattan on 14th Street uh, for 9-11. And I can just tell you this, I was a pastor of a, of a church on 14th Street, Our Lady of Guadalupe. The church was never fuller. Yeah. Hmm. Never fuller. Uh, I, I walked through the streets in my cassock to get to St. Vincent's Hospital. Never got more respect wow. from people. I mean, it was incredible. It was a total silence on the streets and everything else. That one event did so much. It impacted people. Uh, did God use that event? Certainly. He, God uses everything, even, with, even things that we consider negative. Everything he uses to call sinners to himself. So, yes, why not? It can be. It can be. And to say it cannot be is to limit God. Never do that. 
We had a beautiful simultaneous event at LifeSite. Bishop Strickland offered the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass uh, during the event. We had heard there was a bunch of uh, satanic activity uh, going on at the same time. And it was really beautiful to see thousands and thousands of people uh, joining in with Bishop Strickland as uh, he offered the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. Um, really, I think the elevation happened right as the eclipse uh, got into the United States. So really beautiful uh, from Bishop Strickland in, in conjunction, uh, or, uh, aired live at LifeSite News. Really beautiful. And well, you've got you've got a, a beautiful a beautiful thing happening with the mass in conjunction with that, and you've got one of the finest bishops ever, and in, in, certainly in the United States, uh, uh, celebrating that mass. What could be better? It's beautiful. Indeed, we had a very sad thing happen this week as well. There was a lot of hopes actually because President Trump had telegraphed uh, the week before last that. He was going to make a statement on abortion. And I think there was some high hopes for it. When it did come, it was very, very sad indeed. Let's play you the first part of what he said. Take a listen. We want to make it easier for mothers and families to have babies, not harder. That includes supporting the availability of fertility treatments like IVF in every state in America like the overwhelming majority of Americans, including the vast majority of Republicans, conservatives, Christians, and pro-life Americans, I strongly support the availability of IVF for couples who are trying to have a precious baby. What could be more beautiful or better than that? Many people have asked me what my position is, is on abortion and abortion rights, especially since I was proudly the person responsible for the ending of something that all legal scholars, both sides, wanted and, in fact, demanded be ended. Roe v. Wade. They wanted it ended. It must be remembered that the Democrats are the radical ones on this position because they support abortion up to and even beyond the ninth month. The concept of having an abortion in the later months and even execution after birth, and that's exactly what it is, the baby is born, the baby is executed after birth is unacceptable, and almost everyone agrees with that. Now it's up to the states to do the right thing. Like Ronald Reagan, I am strongly in favor of exceptions for rape, incest, and life of the mother. So, really unbelievable. Um, what he says there to start off with about IVF being, you know, pro-life and everything else is absolute nonsense. We know, you know, beyond any shadow of a doubt, millions and millions of babies die thanks to IVF, this um, inhumane way of, of generating life. And it's just, it's really sad. I was taken aback with the statement and I was saddened to see there was a lot of pro-life commentators um, either agreeing or saying, oh, it wasn't that bad. Uh, Liz, your take. Well, uh, you know, it, there was a mixed message sent by President Trump beforehand, um, and uh, he declined to endorse a national ban after months of kind of going, I guess, back and forth. Um, and um, I was concerned about his, we've done a terrible job educating the public and obviously our politicians on the anti-life position of IVF um, and its impact on fertilized um, embryos. Um, and in his kind of just washing the hands and saying, I just leave it up to the states, whatever they want to do, instead of being really mo more proactive. Look, I think personally, I think that you know, this, they said 2022 was abortion was really on the ballots in many respects, that suburban women came out very strong um, supporting the Democrats. We need to educate the public and our politicians about the um, realities of abortion. Um, we cannot, obviously, there are billions of dollars that are being poured into the abortion agenda in the ads um, that are supporting abortion by threats and you know fear mongering we have not done a good enough job in educating the public about the reality of abortion and the importance of having a pro-life society 
that embraces life. Um, I think we need to continue as, you know, we're all political animals. We all, as Americans, go to the um, ballot box to vote. That's our um, job as citizens. Um, I think we need in the next um, several months to really articulate and push our politicians and the Republican Party to be more pro-life, not to be embarrassed, not to kind of back off, not to be fearful that this is a position that is not popular um, among the uh, voting public. We need to be step out bravely and boldly and continue to you know, pressure President Trump to be um, more pro-life, you know, because I think, you know, I sense in his heart he is, um, but, you know, there's all these dissonant voices, I'm sure, in his ears as a presidential candidate, you know, oh, you can't take this position, you can't take that position. Um, you know, Mother Miriam said that if President Trump is to win in light of everything, all the corruption, all the vote by the mail-in voting, all the machinations that are going in, it will be an act of God. Well, it's only going to be an act of God if this country um, raises the issue of life and elevates it where it needs to be um, in a Christian country. God's not going to intervene and save us from the disasters that are impending everywhere we look unless this country steps up and tells the true story, the real story about the importance of life and supporting women who choose life um, in very difficult situations. Uh, we've, got, we've got to be bolder, braver, and not shy or afraid um, of the impact of celebrating life in this country or else God is going to um, turn his back on the Ninevehs of America. And um, I, we've, we have a very strong message and I think this election is going to be pivotal um, about putting, putting life back on the ballot. Father, your take. Uh, I absolutely agree. I have to say that I was Shocked isn't the word because on, on this whole issue, nothing can shock any longer. It's it's disastrous the whole issue. But his uh, his position on IVF, um, that I wasn't waiting for him to, to, to talk like that. I was um, I was waiting for him to say something about adoption. Mm. I was uh, that's what I that's what I thought he was going to say. When he didn't, and he comes up with that for the solution. Uh, very disappointed, very disappointed, to put it lightly. However, however, I'm hopeful.